Swansea right through, well, the heart of Wales to end at Shrewsbury. I'm going just a few stops up the line to discover how a once busy industrial town reinvented itself. The station name is actually longer than the station. Ponta de Lice. Ponta de Lice, Ponta de Lice. A hundred years ago, Ponta de Lice was a very busy railway junction. Thousands of tons of coal travelled down this line when the town was at the centre of the tin plate industry. People moved to Ponta de Lice from miles around to work in the mines, and the town had a thrive in High Street. It was the golden age of shopkeeping photography. Shopkeepers would happily stand on the pavement all day to be photographed without realising their entire stock was being ransacked behind their backs by Edwardian hoodies. So it's changed from what's obviously a very bustling scene here with sort of trains coming in and out, four lines, various platform buildings everywhere, which seems to have long since gone. So that's a major difference to take place. Let's see what I can find if I look up here. The station became a request stop in 1965. A victim of the sweeping changes Dr Beach had made across the rail network. It's now used on an average day by a mere 13 passengers. So if the station's downsized, I wonder what's happened to the high street. I see love is big in this town. This place seems to be full of bridal shops everywhere you go. I've seen six already. Ponta de Lice clearly likes a wedding. There's another one just here, look. Hello there. Um, I've just been walking through town and uh, there seems to be sort of a, an abundance of wedding dress shops. There's wedding oh. stationers, there's florists. What, what... Well, it's come to be known as a, a wedding village, uh -huh. yes. Well, how has it come about to be a wedding village? Oh, about 26 years ago, I wanted to open a, a wedding shop. My husband came out of the mines and I thought, ah, I'm going to spend some money. <laughs> so I, I bought the shop and we started and that was it. 12,000 bridal gowns later and Marion's helped establish Ponta de Lice as the destination for brides in search of that perfect dress. Hi, pleased to meet you. Hello, I'm Paul. Hi, Paul. I'm Rissian. Um, did I not see you on the train earlier with you with some people earlier? Yeah, I think so. There's Quite excited. Today. Yes, yes. And, you, you know, you'll probably get married loads of times, so you'll be able to say, oh, that was my first one, that was my second one, it was the sixth. No, this is... This is it, is one it? One and only, yes. <laughs> yeah. Good, I'm very pleased to hear it. Um, so where should we start? I'd like to show uh, Rissian the bridal gowns, which we've got another room for. Right, OK. Um, so if you're ready, yeah, I, I'll ready. take you. Is that OK? OK, I'll follow you, shall I? OK. okay. Now, I've been invited to help pick out this once-in-a-lifetime dress. Are you getting changed behind there? Yes. Okay, so I shouldn't really be here, then, really. Should I, should I look out the window and I can't see anything? That doesn't really work, does it? Um, well, this could be slightly embarrassing, but I might as well get to know everyone. Uh, which one of you is the bride's mother? It's me. Oh, hello there. Hi, I'm hi. Paul. Nice to meet you. Hi. 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 Um, so, are you uh, looking forward to your daughter's... Uh, Wedding day? Oh, of course I am. It's really, well, exciting, really. So. Is it an emotional time? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yes, it, it is. is. It's really emotional. Mm. It's really gone to the heart. You know, we're starting crying now again. Uh, yeah. But no, it is. It's pretty emotional. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you like this now, what are you going to be like on the day? Oh, I'd be like a. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we are, we'll be. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, babe. Oh. Oh, yes. Although I can confidently say that Rissy Ann is modelling a tea-length 1950s inspired dress with lace applique, I have no idea what it means. Ni 1950s and bouffant was right. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the two words I recognise. I seem to have stepped into a totally baffling world of silk and strong opinions. I had a bit of a shock then when it was short. I thought, whoa, there she goes again. <laughs> <laughs> this is all rather surreal. All I did was jump off at a little request stop just to see what was here, and 15 minutes later, I'm in a ladies' changing room surrounded by ladies. Not that I'm complaining. Yes, well then. Oh, that is oh. Right. 
Well, that's a completely different response to the first one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope I'm reliably informed that this is a classic sweetheart neckline with fitted bodice and fishtail hemline. It's lovely. The detail's really nice. Yeah, I love it. It's a bit long and a bit too fussy on the bottom. Nice. Oh, oh, yes. This oh, this sounds like gorgeous. Ah, now, this is the one. My increasingly expert eye tells me it's a lace illusion neckline with floor length tool train. That's beautiful. That's a lot of work on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's stunning. You'd make a great entrance in that. Oh, how do you feel in that now? Perfect. Oh, you look beautiful. You really do. You got. I mean, yes, yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> It's been the most enjoyable experience helping a bride pick out her new dress and along with her very friendly, excitable female relatives. And I suppose I'm happy to see that this place is up on its feet again after the heavy industry disappeared 50 years ago. And if you are going to have a new industry, it might as well be something like weddings, optimism, the future, happiness. All those things that money can't buy. Before I get back on the train, I've got an overwhelming urge for some male company. Ponte de Lice isn't just about women and weddings. The men round here make their voices heard too. Sounds rather beautiful, don't you think, from what I can make out? Oh, don't let me stop you. Welcome to Ponder the Lice Mill Choir. Do you want to join? Um, are you open for new members at this moment? Oh, always open for new members. Well, OK, yes. Uh, yes, all right, go on then, yes. But you have to have a voice test. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Come forward. Sing this one note. OK. <laughs> well, perhaps not I that one. I think if you go back 40 years, I might manage it. That an operation. Mm -hmm. Baraton. Oh, OK. <laughs> as quick as that, is it? Make your own boys. Hi. Hi there. You speak oh, right. <laughs> no, but I sing it beautifully. Right. Where's Gareth? <laughs> Some phonetics <laughs> for the Welsh bit. Ooh, <laughs> I need phonetics for the phonetics, to be honest. <laughs> I enjoy singing, but it's time to measure myself against the experts. Not quite right. Let's have a look at some parts. Let's have the melody first of all, then. Tenors, please. Two, three, and go. These guys make complex harmony singing sound easy, and there's good reason. Ponte de Lice Mel Choir is the most successful choir in Wales. They've won the coveted National Ice Stedford competition a record 16 times and even toured the world, singing to sell out crowds. That is until I joined them. Baritons. <laughs> Two, three, sing. Guide me, O thou great Now, do not adjust your hearing. I think I might be trying to sing two different parts at the same time. And you can't blame the new gentleman because there's more than one person getting it wrong. I'm leading them. <laughs> well, if I may say, you're leading them very well. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's a new arrangement I've been working on. <laughs> well, after that, everyone's ready for a break. And it gives me a chance to chat to Mark, who's been a member for 30 years. How much did I b d drag down the general standard of the choir by what I was warbling in there? I, I think you need to speak to a musical director. <laughs> and as a top tenor, I will be biased anyway. But, but, uh, I think so is there a bit of a rivalry between the tenors and the baritones? Absolutely. Friendly, yeah. friendly rivalry. They'll probably tell you different, but yeah, it's, it's friendly, friendly, <laughs> friendly as far as you're concerned. The choir started back in 1960, and there are still a handful of founder members. But it's always open to new recruits, and David joined just this year. Have you ever done anything like that before? No, never really. I mean, I'm a very bad karaoke singer, to be honest. Um, well, the trouble with karaoke is you're on your own, aren't you? <laughs> you are on your own. 
but it gives you time to learn here. The way that the guys practice, um, it's very professional. So if I don't get it, I, listen, I, I tune into Howard and then I get it and then I'm away again. Do you find it's quite it's an emotional dimension to what you're doing here in all those voices singing together? Yes, it's the new mindfulness, if you like. Um, you're immersed in the music. You don't think about anything else. Yes, yes. Well, that's the great thing about any kind of performance. If you can lose yourself within it, the, the rest of the world disappears, doesn't it? Uh, it does. Back in rehearsal, I do my best to keep up with my fellow baritones. After no time at all, well, after a couple of hours or so, I begin to get the hang of things. Here comes the big finale. There's a great sort of feeling of camaraderie being in, in, in a room with 70 other men singing this stuff and the, and the pride that they take in it, the work they put into it. It was really good to be singing your heart out. Fantastic. It was life-enhancing. That's the best way to put it, I think. Yeah, definitely life-enhancing. Next time, I dip my toe into the past and visit request stops with hidden histories. Do you have confidence in our fearless leader? So far, so good. So yeah. far, so good, OK? <laughs> but end up wishing I hadn't. That is one of the most insulting things anyone's <laughs> ever said to me in my life. Journey's end next week. Paul's back at eight. £6.7 billion, pounds, that's how much we spend collectively every week. Mary Portis explores what Britain buys in a new series tomorrow night at nine o'clock. And straight after that, memories of school as we investigate the logic of some very British problems. Brand new at 10. Indian Summers next tonight. What now for Alfred or Alice? <laughs>